to start if it's okay for you all. <laughs> so, good morning to all of you, and uh, uh, I would like to to thank you, uh, knowing that it's a great pleasure uh, to welcome you here in Lyon. Uh, for this uh, 90th conference on shared decision making. So I know that you are coming from all over the world. Uh, so uh, I try to say welcome in different languages. <laughs> so, salamat, bienvenidos, willkommen, bienvenue, benvenuto, welcome, willkommen, welcome. And uh, sorry if it's not uh, the right way to, to say it. Um, it's really great, uh, just amazing, really, uh, to see you here. Uh, Victor told me yesterday, uh, when you see people here, you will say, well, they came, they really came, and yes, you came. <laughs> That's just so fantastic. So, um, it was a project, it was a wish, it was uh, a strong desire uh, that became true, because you all participated to it, and uh, you were all very responsive. Uh, you wanted to meet again, to talk, to exchange on shared decision making, and for that, thanks a lot. I would also like to thank Jacques Cornu, who is here, Julien Cartier, and Franck Chauvin, who is not here today, but uh, he will be with us tomorrow, uh, for working uh, with, uh, with me, and uh, it was, as usual, uh, a very nice experience, so thanks for everything. I would also like uh, to thank the organizing committee and to the colleagues, friends, uh, who reviewed uh, the abstracts uh, on time. It was not easy because the delay were very short, but you did it. So thanks for your help and thanks for your support. I will also thank Marlene. I didn't see for, uh, her for the moment, uh, but uh, Marlene, where are you? You are here. So thanks, Marlene, uh, for being in charge of early careers uh, meetings and exchanges, and uh, because you kindly proposed to organize things. I know that yesterday evening was a great evening, and I'm sure that you will have very nice moments with uh, young researchers, but also with senior researchers, I hope. Um, and I would also like to thank uh, the Congress team, Solange Perel team. Um, they are with us since the beginning, and uh, they did, and they are still doing a great job. Uh, Pauline is not here, but I know all of you know Pauline. Uh, she's uh, so well organized so rigorous, so quiet, and uh, you know, she makes me thought of an aunt, you know, she's uh, very, uh, sh she's just great. So thanks to, to Pauline, thanks to Katarzyna, to Fabien, who is here too, uh, for the website and for the technical support. Um, the very nice blue and red colored lion uh, who is here, it's uh, Fabien's idea, so thank you very much, Fabien. Uh, I would also like uh, to thank uh, our partners who said uh, yes to go with us uh, since the beginning, the Leon Berard Comprehensive Cancer Center with uh, the director of the cancer, uh, Leon Berard Comprehensive uh, Cancer Center, Jean-Yves Blais, the Cancéropole Clara with Véronique Triel-Lenoir, with uh, Julien Biodet and with Arnaud Cutivet the Lausanne University Hospital with Jack and his team, uh, our region, the Auvergne Romans region, and of course, our University Lyon 1. Uh, and I will let after Professor Anne-Marie Schott, who is here, who is a representative of Lyon 1 University and also head of our uh, research lab, on health services research and performance in healthcare to present our university. Uh, but I would like to underline, maybe you already saw for those who arrived yesterday, that uh, you are here in the, what we can call the hospital world of uh, Lyon. So if you are interested in uh, public health history, uh, do not hesitate to ask us 
so as to be able to, vis to visit uh, this uh, uh, world which is really, really unique. So uh, we are here to, uh, uh, to advise you and to tell you uh, where, where to go. And there is also uh, the Museum of Medicine History in half faculty just uh, in the other building, so if you are interested in that, it's really a nice museum. Uh, do not hesitate to go and to visit. Do not hesitate to also to take books. You, I think you saw them at the registration desk. Uh, you saw Le Petit Prince uh, d'Antoine Saint-Exupéry, translated in English, but you can read it in French. Huh? <laughs> it's possible too. Uh, knowing that Antoine uh, Saint-Exupéry was native from the region, you know he's a well-known worldwide, he was an aviator, and uh, we thought it was uh, a good idea uh, to offer you this poetic and philosophical uh, tale. Um, very differently, they didn't arrive for the moment, but we hope today, later, or maybe tomorrow, but we hope today, uh, you will be able to read the special issue of the German Journal for Evidence and Quality in Healthcare. This is the third special issue of this journal dedicated to our conferences, to our conference, with uh, 23 countries uh, who contributed to, to it. So again, thanks to all of you, the authors who contributed to this special issue. Uh, and you will see that this special issue will provide, oh, it's here, great. <laughs> it's just yours, okay. But you will, <laughs> each one of you will have, uh, have one. And it's uh, an overview on the state of the art of the works done in the field. So um, this special issue, uh, the idea came from Martin, so special thanks to Martin who organized uh, in such a nice way and a very effective way uh, this uh, special issue. In three months, uh, we succeed to have it. So thanks to you, Martin, to your team, and to Babette. Um, I will uh, finish just before uh, letting uh, Julien and Jack talk uh, with uh, two things which are uh, important. Uh, we would like to take a photo of all of you, if it's possible. Uh, and so we propose you to meet just before the lunch break, you know, uh, just uh, in front of the building at 12.30. Uh, so please don't miss it, be there. Uh, so has to take a photo and uh, to bring it back home. And uh, this evening, uh, don't miss also uh, for those who uh, would like to go to the gala dinner to be at time, because otherwise it will be quite difficult to be at 7 p.m. at the Embarcadère. Uh, all the information will be provided at the inform reg registration desk. Uh, so do not hesitate to ask, otherwise you have everything you know uh, with, uh, with you. Uh, now I will let Julien and Jacques talk and then Anne-Marie. I will come back to introduce uh, Amiram and Martin, uh, but um, let's go. Yeah. Thank you, Nora. Just a uh, few words to welcome you in Lyon. Uh, many of you um, still visited this town, but I'm I see a few participants yesterday at the workshop and I know that it's the first time in Lyon, so really welcome. Um, as Nora mentioned, uh, Lyon is a historic town. You know that uh, it's uh, ideally located between Massif Central and the Alps at only 300 kilometers of the Mediterranean Sea. And um, Lyon made the most of his exceptional geographical location to build more than 2,000 years of fantasy history. And I hope that you take the time tonight, tomorrow night, to visit uh, our town. Lyon became the second largest French metropolis after Paris and the capital of Auvergne, Rhône Alpes, Auvergne. Now it's named Auvergne, Rhône Alpes, Auvergne. It's a huge region. Um, and um, it's here in University of Lyon 1, the place, the art of patient-centered care and uh, especially cancer-centered uh, care, patient-centered care. And thank you for uh, colleagues from Medical um, under medical backgrounds, 
public health backgrounds to be here with us during these three days. And um, you, as you know, maybe at the Lemberach Cancer Center, which is um, a big partner of this meeting, we um, provide uh, physical activity for cancer patients. And I propose for those who don't go uh, by bus tomorrow night, if you want, um, we can uh, have sports because Lyon is also a city of sports, physical activity. And if you want to uh, test, to um, have great time with us with Nordic Walking at Parc de Paris, I welcome you to come with us. Um, we create a group tomorrow night. Um, take your basket and at 6 p.m. Um, rendezvous uh, at the desk information and we go uh, by subway to the Parc de Paris with a physiotherapist of saint leon bérard Cancer Environment Department and um, for 10 to, uh, tw 10 to 15 person with the accessories to do Nordic, Nordic, Nordic walking, please come with us and test what we propose to all cancer patients at Lyon Bérard. Well, um, to finish, uh, the program is uh, huge, it's challenging. Yesterday it was very stimulating, very challenging, and thank you uh, for all the experts who are in this uh, amphitheatre. I can't mention all the experts, France Legare, Angela Coulter, and so much uh, people that I admire, so thank you to be here, and have a great Congress. Thank you. Welcome to all of you. This morning I would like to address two points. The first one uh, is uh, regarding the French-speaking people. We organized two sessions for uh, these uh, participants this afternoon, half past four, uh, to build a formal network of French-speaking people dedicated to shared decision making in order to promote research and also to promote the share of decision aids in French. And the second one tomorrow uh, afternoon also at four to, uh, um, to show some uh, specific research uh, from French-speaking people. At the second point, I do believe that it's the real time now to uh, give a big th a thank to Noha for her dedicated uh, uh, work for this uh, <laughs> and I also have uh, the great pleasure to welcome you uh, in the University of Lyon and uh, thank you Nora for uh, asking me to just to be here this morning to share this uh, this uh, happiness with you because I know it was uh, a, a big job this year um, so as the representative of the university I just uh, give you a few uh, a few words about the identity and the key figures of this university which uh, houses technological and biological sciences, as well as uh, all the medical school and pharmacy and uh, rehabilitation uh, training, and also uh, sports. Uh, we have uh, 40,000 students every year and uh, approximately 3,000 uh, teachers and, and researchers at the university. And then here you are, as it's been said, you are in the Rockefeller a university, a school of medicine and pharmacy, which was uh, partly founded by the Rockefeller Foundation in 1930. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's been um, built at the same time as the hospital, which is just uh, far uh, across the street. So this being said, I, I can now move to just a more personal speech. Uh, I, am, I am personally uh, very uh, honored of welcoming all of our guests from uh, all over the world with very famous names and uh, very famous experts. And, uh, and, I'm, and I'm really uh, very uh, proud of uh, receiving uh, all of you here today. Um, and I have to admit that decision-making in France, shared decision-making has, has been doing a little progress in actual implementation. And I also have to confess that uh, 
that uh, I have been hearing from uh, shared decision making for more than 20 years from my friends and my colleagues in Lyon. And um, at that time, I didn't have a, the opportunity to really enter into this, uh, uh, this field of research. And um, although the works of the researchers actually made a lot of sense to me, uh, there was such a huge gap between uh, the, the researchers and, and what I was seeing in the clinical practices that uh, I have to confess that uh, I doubt. But these last three years, I have de developed uh, a, a, t a research team, and I'm very happy to work with uh, very good researchers and, uh, and to work specifically in all approaches leading to uh, patient empowerment and patient-centered care. So, so now I'm now convinced that this is the right approach, and you were the pioneers. And you did not resign. You didn't give up. And, uh, and there is no doubt with the internet and digital revolution, so-called e-health, that uh, spreading of the medical knowledge or some kind of medical knowledge that clinicians, um, cl the clinicians do not have any other choice today. And, um, and, and the challenge we have to face in France, but I guess uh, also in many countries, is uh, how are we going to switch from the kind of a paternalist model to a shared decision making model. How do we introduce these approaches in our medical curriculum when those who are responsible for this curriculum are not really aware of all this uh, research? And, uh, and, and I would really like that, uh, that you as researcher, really uh, experts in the field, should, should be the one who are leading this, this uh, movement. So um, maybe um, patients will be very persuasive more than researchers and this is what is happening right now. So now I wish you an excellent uh, ninth conference and uh, I've seen a lot of interesting topics so, uh, in the workshops and, and I don't want to waste your time any longer. So I wish you a very good conference. Thank you very much, Anne-Marie.